Welcome to our viewers and subscribers to yet another beautiful Bible study and lesson. Lesson number 10, number 11, sorry, longing for more. Um, mm -hmm. As I went through this lesson, I longed for more time. As I'm sure, Daryl, my dear friend, you also uh, have the same sentiments. But here we are. Um, what a beautiful study today. So um, we are standing in here for um, the conference. Uh, Rene Horn is away for the next couple of weeks because he is uh, on an assignment uh, for the greater uh, upper highway area here in Durban for an evangelism thrust. So we pray that God will bless him as he goes about his work. Daryl, welcome to the program again. And uh, it's always a blessing to be with you. Uh, may you welcome our viewers and pray for us before we dive into God's word. Yes, of course. Good morning, Brian. It's always a pleasure to be here and good morning or afternoon or evening to our viewers wherever you are um, tuning in to uh, open God's word with us. But before we get into the study, let's bow our heads in prayer together. Father God, oh, what a privilege it is. We are very aware mm. that right now we have the freedom and the means and the opportunity to be able to open your word mm. with friends. With, uh, as we do so, we pause to thank you for this freedom, for this opportunity, to thank you for your word that just keeps revealing more and more of you to us. Mm, yeah. We thank you too, Lord, that you have promised whenever we open your word that your spirit will be with us. And we are yeah. claiming that promise mm. this morning and asking that the Holy Spirit guide our, our thinking, our discussion, our mm. questions, our, <clears throat> our conclusions. And in the process, may this draw us closer into the heart of God and Amen. into a deeper understanding of your will for our lives. Yes. We pray for each one who's viewing, Father, at whatever time of day or night or wherever they are in the world, we know that your spirit can reach them. May they be yeah. very aware of mm. your presence as we study together now mm. is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I was so acutely aware of the spirit of the Lord as you're praying, Daryl. Uh, it's such mm. a, a moving experience to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Um, mm. We start with our memory text this uh, Bible study, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 6, a text known to most of us. Now, these things were an example for us that we might not desire evil as they did. Clearly, the study here is about the history of God's people, the children of Israel. He delivered them from the bondage of slavery. And the bondage of sin brings them out of Egypt and uh, desires for them to get to the land of promise, the Canaan, um, mm -hmm. where they would enjoy true rest in the Lord, uh, not just physically, not just temporally, but spiritually. And sadly, uh, many of them to whom the word was preached did not enter. So as we look at um, the study for this week here, we find that Jesus is the great model and that um, scripture is so full of wonderful typologies um, mm. of the salvation that God intended from the beginning of the foundation of the world. Of course, mm. God foresaw that sin would arise, but before sin arised, he had a plan of salvation. And that is what we see from Genesis chapter 3 right up to the end of the Bible in the book of Revelation. So, Daryl, as we go into the baptism into Moses, we see here a typology, um, a figurative application, a metaphor for God's people Israel as they went through the cloud or followed the cloud, I should say, and went through the sea, the Red Sea. Now there are some people that say 
It is the Reed Sea, and they could walk through it, but um, uh, any Bible scholar that is worth their salt will know it was the Red Sea. This was a huge miracle that God parted yeah. these waters, and they walked through on dry land. But uh, here Paul uses the analogy that they were baptized into Moses. Um, how does this work, Daryl, as we look at the spiritual application for Israel today. Um, isn't this a beautiful step as God delivers them from Egypt, from slavery, symbol of sin, and then takes them through the waters, and then they were to follow the cloud and experience true rest? I mean, what thoughts come to your mind as you read this passage of scripture? So, so many, Brian, so many, but I, I think there were probably two that, that stood out the most for me um, that link specifically to the verse that you read right at the beginning where Paul says that um, these things became our examples. Mm -hmm. And and there were two kinds of examples, and you've, you've actually touched on both of them. The one is the example of their experience what they actually went through, the example that the Israelites as a nation are for right. us, what their experience was. And you just mentioned their, the, the whole story through the Old Testament of going into Egypt and being trapped in Egypt and then coming out of Egypt and through the Red Sea and then into this desert experience and then ultimately into the, the promised land. Their multiple experiences are examples for us mm. because every one of us have a miniature of that thousands of years worth of experience in our three score and ten yes. where we are trapped into a life of sin where we we hear a call there is a that we all have a moses in our life that that somehow helps us move out of this we we go through a, a baptism into a new life we go into a journey with god and there is this promise of a of a rest in him mm -hmm. and there's a, a rest in him that we experience in the cloud but there's mm -hmm. also an ultimate rest in him so that was the one aspect which for me was just Paul using their whole experience through the Old Testament as an illustration of what might be possible in my life. Mm. But then there was also, and he goes on to use more and more of these through his writings, how there were specific types that pointed right. to specific things as well. Yeah. So there were objects that were metaphors. There was the journey that was a metaphor, mm. but then there were specific things as well. You know, we we read of, of, of one of my favorite texts in Exodus is where God says to, to Moses, build a sanctuary, sanctuary. Um, that I may dwell, yes. you know? And that in itself for me is a symbol of something that God has the desire to dwell with us. And then the symbols within the sanctuary and its services and so on, there are are objects, activities mm. that are examples to us, teachings to us. But then there is the experience of the nation of Israel that is also an example for us that we can we can learn from. So so thank you, Daryl. So so we can learn from their mistakes, not to repeat them. But we can yeah. also learn from the times when they were faithful. And, uh, yes. you know, sometimes we're very hard up, up upon the children of Israel. And, you know, we, 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 we emphasize on the text where God says they were a stiff-necked people and a rebellious yeah. people. And yeah. sure, you know, um, whilst Moses was up in Mount Sinai, there they're worshiping the golden calf and Aaron is leading out in the service uh, of this idolatrous practice they were accustomed to in Egypt. So uh, although God took e them out of Egypt, somehow the Egypt in them was the most difficult thing to take out. And, uh, mm -hmm. and yet, uh, Paul says yeah. uh, at least four times in Cor Corinthians 10, 1 Corinthians 10, 1 to 11, neither be like some of them who tempted Christ, neither be like some of them yeah. that fornicated, and neither be like some of them that murmured. So, so yes, there are these, um, you know, imperatives that don't do the mistakes they did, 
But in spite of the mistakes they made, God was a gracious and kind and merciful God to them. So, so there were times when um, they, they listened and, and they did things. Uh, when God said, prepare sanctuary, I mean, they brought all their things, right? And, and Moses, yeah. Moses had to say to them, okay, don't bring any more. You yeah. brought more than enough. So, so here was a generous spirit. Okay, um, we've, we've, we've disobeyed God, but we, we want to obey God. Uh, all the Lord has said we want to do. So I think we can see these similarities in our lives where we are rebellious. We are backsliding. And yet God is constantly reaching out to them. And um, Daryl, as we look at the Greek word for example there in uh, 1 Corinthians, um, it's typos or uh, a type, uh, a symbol, a model. And uh, as you think about Moses, he was a type of Christ because he led them out of Egypt. Jesus came yeah. to lead us out of slavery. Moses did that yeah. for them. As they prepared, Moses told them, listen, uh, today is the Passover. Moses told them about the necessity, the necessity of trusting in God. And Jesus came to teach us of the necessity of trusting in God. And here are the symbols of Christ himself, the Passover lamb that they took just before they left Egypt. You think about Moses leading them by a pillar of fire, which is actually Jesus and the cloud during the day. Uh, you think about the baptism they go through. You think about the bread and the water they need in the desert. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. Uh, you think of Moses dying just before they enter the promised land, but being resurrected. Well, of course, he did so because the children of Israel had really got to him. But uh, God was merciful to him and raised him up again. Well, Jesus died for us, not because of sin, but because of our sin, that we might enter the heavenly kingdom. So we can look at of course, the sanctuary is just immersed with types and symbols of salvation in Jesus. So beautiful, beautiful gems that we can extrapolate if we will go deeper into the study. But let's move on to the ritual and sacrifices, Daryl. Uh, so we're coming now to the sanctuary. Um, so immediately after Mount Sinai, well, part of Mount Sinai, when Moses goes up into Mount Sinai to receive the law, He's also given the ceremonial laws. He's given yeah. the model for the sanctuary that is to be built and the priesthood that was to uh, officiate. Again, Jesus, again, is our high priest and, and everything we can look at comes through to us. But Daryl, as we look at the sin offering particularly, uh, because yeah. that's the whole idea of the sanctuary was about God taking care of the sin problem. Um, what striking thoughts came to you um, as you see the sinner coming with his offering? What does it mean? And how finally was the sin to be removed from the sinner? I mean, this is just so beautiful. Oh, Brian, I mean, sure, we could, we, could, we could actually just pause here and just spend the rest of our study in Leviticus 4 um, and, not, and not go any further. Right. And, um, but I, I, I think there are, there are a few things that, that are important in the context of the, the theme of our quarter. Yes. Um, because there are so many things we could, we could pick up in, in, in Leviticus 4 and then um but but in the context of firstly the 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 desire for rest in a restless world which is the theme of our our studies this quarter mm -hmm. and then also zoning in here on the fact that everything that happened within this particular sacrifice was also um part of what paul says is an example for us that we should be learning from. Right. And, and I, I, in preparing for, for this study, I, I found myself just picturing being in the sanctuary mm. and bringing that young lamb <laughs> and what might have led up to bringing that young lamb and what that experience was like for the priest for for the child of Israel, whoever they were, 
would have usually been the father of a household who would have come on behalf of his family. Um, and what that experience was really like, because as we said earlier, is that each aspect of the service has a deep meaning and points mm. in some way right. to our salvation and to the promises that God has for us, whether it's for our life here on earth or in the life hereafter. Every aspect of that, the spilling of the blood, the sprinkling of the blood, the the burning of the flesh, the the prayer, the incense, mm. the all of that had had very specific meanings. But my mind focused on what did it mean for that father of that household? Yes. And what was that experience like? And what does that mean in my life? Mm. And and realizing the seriousness of that experience of that sacrifice. Mm. And I sometimes think that we have it a little bit easier today, Brian. That's you know, what goes through my mind. That was going to um I I thought of having to to be part of a ritual mm. that took the life of an animal every time. Mm. And and I, I I realized that there are times where I have been too light-hearted in my confession mm -hmm. and and have not given thought to the sacrifice that it really took for me to be forgiven mm. and so for me this was a very somber reminder of what jesus really went through so that god could say to daryl your sins are forgiven amen so daryl when you look at the role of the the sinner he had to bring a sacrifice, um, place his hands over the head of this innocent animal. It had to be without any blemish. It couldn't yeah. be crippled okay. in any way. Couldn't have a sore, couldn't have one eye that was injured. Uh, it had to be spotless uh, because of the representation we find in John 1, 29, behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So every time they brought the sacrifice, they realized that, wow, my sins now are placed on this substitution. Um, and this innocent little lamb, isn't it just so beautiful? I mean, imagine if the animal rights were around, um, you know, <laughs> they would have been like, what are you doing? You're killing these innocent animals, you murderers. But remember, it's pointing to something much more greater than that animal. Here is a type or symbol that John points out to Jesus, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So when you think about the blood gushing out of this slit throat mm -hmm. and being collected in the bowl and then the priest taking this blood and then going to put it on the horns of the altar and pouring the rest at the sac altar of sacrifice, pointing to the cross, of course. Um, it's so, like you said, easy for us today. They had to see this uh, in reality all this gruesome murder that took place. I mean, they were millions and you can imagine millions of sacrifices were brought every year because people sin so easily. Uh, but here we are today looking back the cross. We pray to Jesus, but Paul says, how is that you have taken the blood of Christ as something to be trampled upon? In other words, when we just sin and pray and go back to our sin, pray and go back to our sin something is a mess here we are not serious about the thing that sin has done to our savior the wages of sin is death and christ comes to take our sins upon himself i like the way paul says it in uh, first corinthians uh, chapter 5 verse 18 he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteous of god in him so, yeah. so Daryl, yeah. again, we could spend the, the, the whole Bible study yeah. on this year. The, the, <laughs> the efficacy of Jesus Christ and um, the rituals, man, uh, as gruesome as they were, could not depict what our yeah. Savior went for us on the cross of Calvary. So here is atonement. Without mm -hmm. blood, without the shedding of blood, rather, there was no forgiveness of sin. And so the children of Israel were reminded that for them to receive true rest from sin, blood 
innocent blood would have to be shed and that would point to the life and death and resurrection of the Messiah that would finally come. Daryl, as we look at the example of rest, Hebrews chapter 4, again, this is so full of, of deep spiritual symbols. Uh, Paul introduces us to the fact that the children of Israel did not enter to whom it was preached, the gospel was preached to them, did not enter into the promised land. Yes, there were those who were from 20 years and younger that entered, but for the parents that came out of Egypt, that rebelled just before they entered the first time and had to go into the wilderness for 40 years and then die in the wilderness and only their children, besides, of course, Joshua and Caleb, um, enter those who are over 20 years old. I mean, that, that's a sad experience. God intended them for them to be in Canaan before the year was over and they spend a whole 39 plus yeah. in the yeah. wilderness and sadly so many of them perish and here yeah. now Paul says lest you uh, have the same experience and fail to enter into the rest that Jesus offers us um, how can we avail ourselves of this rest and, and what is this rest because we find in the Bible study here Paul alludes to the Sabbath as the day of rest. But of course, we, we understand as we study deeper, it's not about the Sabbath, but the okay. Sabbath is used as an example as God sees from his rest. Yeah. How can we cease from our works to enter into this rest, Daryl? Yeah. And I think this was a, this, this part just, I think on this lesson, this whole quarter just took a little bit of a turn right and went a little level deeper here mm. um at this point where we realized that you know we've we've been studying for weeks and weeks the deeper meanings of what it means to have rest in god mm. and what are we resting from so right you know what is the rest from and what is the rest in Good point. and and here, it took us a, a, a level deeper where, and in, in fact, I just wanted to read verse 11. Um, yes, so if, if, our, if our, our viewers have their Bibles or just want to listen along, where, mm -hmm. where Paul writes, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Let anyone, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Mm. Mm, and mm, I thought it mm. was the emphasis on being diligent in entering that rest right. and realize that this rest is so much bigger than just the experience of Sabbath rest. Yes. And yes. we have spent many, many hours this quarter understanding what the Sabbath rest is and this just kind of expanded our thinking and realized that the sabbath itself mm. is a type right of a, it's a it's an example of a much deeper Amen. much longer much greater rest that awaits us and and paul i can almost imagine paul writing this with an intensity mm. to to the to to the jews at this time just going we can't miss this deeper meaning they lost the plot That's they right. the, for them the sabbath race was just about a day with no manner mm. it is so much more than that Amen. and let us not fall into that trap of of experiencing only sabbath now as mm -hmm. a physical experience of rest because this rest is an eternal rest amen this rest is a rest in god yeah. it's not just about what we are resting from but who we are resting in, in. and I the like fact that. That, that sabbath rest has no end just right. as the promise for for the children of israel was come i will take you to this land i will give you your inheritance mm. it wasn't meant to be a temporary thing 
It was meant to, you will have arrived and you will now be my people in this new land. You will occupy it. You will, you will multiply. You will take mm. over. You will illustrate to the world what this means. And that is what Paul is reminding us of, is to say, you can enter into mm. a foretaste of that rest now. But boy, is there something magnificent even beyond that. And let us not fall into the trap at the children of Israel and allow our disobedience to right. keep us out of that promise. Mm. Because we might experience a Sabbath rest now, but our disobedience will keep us out of that eternal rest. So, Daryl, as, as you spoke, there two things came to my mind. First of all, uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus says, Come unto me, all who mm. labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. So clearly that rest here... Uh, is much more deeper than physical rest. Yeah. It's spiritual yeah. rest because it says, uh, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So Jesus is our great example. And it, yeah. and it says, if we will learn of him, if we will spend time in his word, if we will connect with him in prayer, if we'll be willing to minister for him, he says, then you shall find rest for your souls. Absolutely. Because he says, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Wow, Daryl, how often do we try and earn our own way into heaven? Um, the Pharisees were, were sticklers for that. Um, they tried by their works to enter in, and they failed. So, so Paul tells us, um, the other thing that, the other thought that came to my mind as you spoke is that they entered not in to the promised land uh, because of unbelief. Yeah. Um, and that unbelief, again, shows through their spiritual connection with God, which was not what it should have been. That's why they, and, and by the way, the Greek word for that word unbelief is disobedience. Uh, yeah. so, so a better translation would be disobedience. Because of their disobedience, they did not enter in. God told them, listen, go forward. Joshua and Caleb said, we are able, of course, by God's grace to enter. Yeah. What did they say? Oh, no, the giants, no, the walls, no, the land just swallows up like grasshoppers. So they looked at the obstacles and disobeyed God. When God said, go into the wilderness now, because you don't want to go there, you want to go back to Egypt. They said, okay, now we will go. So, so when God said, go, they, they turned back. When God said, don't go, then they wanted to go. Aren't we like that? <laughs> so I, I just see myself, how many times yeah. have I said, to God, I'll go for you, then I don't go. And then yeah. when God says, okay, it's not time for you to go, then we want to go. Uh, yeah. So there are, we find the rest here that, that, that uh, God wanted for them. They did not enter. Of course, there were those who did enter, but we find again, their spiritual life was fraught with so much backsliding and so much yeah. coming to God and then going back, coming to yeah. God and going back. And isn't that our problem today? So, so the true rest we need to experience is to rest in Jesus as our example and to realize that he has paid the price for our sins. Let us come to him. Let us not try and weave our own way as Adam and Eve tried to make their own garments, as Cain tried to make his own sacrifice, as Nimrod, you know, all these kind of things. Daryl, um, as we look at Wednesday, um, Paul, the writer that we believe of the book of yeah. Hebrews, uh, takes us to Psalm 95, um, where David says, oh. no, hard, today if you'll hear his voice, harden yeah. not, not your hearts. So, so, yeah. so the issue here is the heart. Um, Israel had a problem with the heart in the wilderness. Spiritual Israel today has a problem with the heart. And I think Paul gets to the heart of this in Hebrews chapter 8 and 10, where he's talking about the Holy Spirit writing upon our hearts. Um, as you look at the book of Hebrews, we see it's a book where Paul is trying to get his Hebrew readers to understand that in Christ and in Christ alone do we find true rest because yeah. there was this tension between... Yeah. Judaism and the early Christian church. Uh, should we go back to the rituals? Uh, oh, Christ is our sacrifice, Paul says. Um, who is our high priest? Should we go to the high priest, the temple? Paul says, we have a high priest that's passed in the heavens. 
So, so as we look at the experience of the Hebrews in the wilderness, the Hebrews after the cross, the Hebrew church of today, spiritual Israel, um, we see there's an appeal to us. Harden not your hearts yeah. as in the provocation. In other words, still today, there is the hardening yeah. of the hearts where we are not listening to God's voice. Um, how can this be more pragmatic for God's people today, Daryl? Maybe you can just break that down for us. So while you were describing that, Brian, the, a thought came to my mind and I, I just went to something that I had had written here from, from Wednesday's lesson okay. and highlighted um, the statement about the, the unfaithfulness of the Israelites and, and their fa resulted in their failure to enter into the rest that God wanted for them. Mm. And in my reflecting on that was the realization again that God did everything that he right. possibly could to make it possible for them to experience his rest. Yes. And that's the bit that I drew into my own life, that God has placed, has opened doors, brought people, created situations, deployed the Holy Spirit, used his word, sent people. He has done everything mm. possible, firstly, to wake me up. Yes. Okay. To realize that there's more. And then secondly, is that as I realize the rest is that is possible. Um, and I see how far away from that I really am. Mm. He then points me to Jesus and mm. shows me that yet again, he's done everything to make it possible for me to experience that rest. And again, you, you realize the short sightedness that the Israelites have and that we have where we think, yeah, I want, I'd like that, but how about I have it this way? Right. Or how about I get it this way? Mm. And your examples of Adam and Eve sewing their own clothes of, of Cain with his own sacrifice of, um of the the pharisees and their their hundreds of ways of earning god's favor mm -hmm. that jesus speaks out against that the, that that we that we read about in scripture and 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 realizing that actually god has done everything mm -hmm. already he's yeah. done it he has made it possible he's opened the way he's even made it possible for me to stand before the throne of heaven, perfect. Hmm. If I do it his way, if I am covered in Jesus' blood, when the father looks on me, he doesn't even see my son. He only sees his perfect son standing there in my stead. Amen. And I think that this is the plea from this part of the lesson is just let go of having to do this your way. God is reminding us that he has done it all. That's right. He's reminding us that he has given it all. That actually all that I need to do is recognize that that hard work has been done. Mm. And accept the fact that there is nothing I can do to make this right. I don't have something better than what God has already done. And so on a practical level, it is my connection with jesus that That's makes right. that possible Amen. and yeah. so to your question around practically what does this mm. mean it simply means jesus brian that's right. what it means it <laughs> means jesus and me is how that rest becomes possible for me now and in eternity we are on the same path daryl and uh, that's exactly what comes to my mind and, and i'm reminded of the words of jesus i am the way the truth and the life. So as you said, you know, we, we try to do things our own way. And, the, and, the, and yet the Bible says, you know, lean not according to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. Don't trust in the ways of men. And so often, right. Uh, again, we reminded in Psalm 77, thy way, O Lord, is in the sanctuary. And, and God had shown them how they could 
be delivered from sin. And it was all in the types and symbols of the sanctuary service. And of course, Jesus being the great center of the types and symbols. So, so Dale, um, I'd like us, I'm just going to put it on the screen. I'm going to share my screen with our viewers here. Um, it says here um, in Hebrews 4 verse 8, for if Jesus, I'm just going to highlight it here. Um, if Jesus had given them rest, then uh, that is actually the word Joshua. If Joshua had given them rest, the children of Israel, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? And then verse 9 says, there remaineth therefore a rest. And that word rest in the Greek is sabbatismos, Sabbath. There remaineth a Sabbath to Thanks. the people of God. So, so Daryl, clearly here, the, the children of Israel did enter into the promised land. Paul is writing now to his Hebrew writers and he's saying, listen, but, but there still remaineth a rest. So clearly yeah. it's not talking about the physical and the uh, historical uh, entering into Canaan, but something was amiss here. The Hebrew writers uh, were still holding on to their rituals. And those rituals were to point to the true Jesus Christ, as you mentioned. And, and, and Paul is now saying, there remaineth a sabbatismo, a, a, a keeping of a Sabbath. Mm. So in line with this, Daryl, we see clearly uh, Paul is the whole book of Hebrews is telling the children of Israel, listen, Jesus is our sacrifice. Jesus is our high priest. Mm -hmm. And it's the heavenly sanction that is more important. The earthly was just a type and a model. And, um, you know, in, in chapter 10, verse 26, it says, if you willfully sin, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Now, some mm -hmm. people have taken that to say, well, you know what, that's the unpardonable sin. But, but here Paul is writing about Jesus. The Hebrews had not accepted him as the Messiah. And even though Jesus had already given him life as a sacrifice for the sins of the world, there was this tension between uh, the rituals and, of course, the reality, which is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Daryl, we could say so much more, but uh, our time is fast going to an end here. Let us look at mm -hmm. conquering a heavenly city here. Sure. Now, as we yeah. look at Galatians, we see again mm -hmm. type and symbols pointing to the reality we find in Jesus. Perhaps, um, Daryl, if you would just give us Galatians 3, verse 26 to 29 in a summary. What do you uh, see as uh, the fact that God still wants to deliver his people from slavery? Because here is a mention here that there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free mm -hmm. man, female nor male. Uh, the level... The, the field is a level plane for everybody. God is no re respecter mm. of persons. And right in there yeah. is a quotation, the last text was 29. If he be Christ, then he are what? He are heirs according to the promise. He are the seed of Abraham. So clearly there's deep yeah. symbolism here pointing to Jesus again as the only means by which we can have true freedom or true rest. What comes yeah. to you, Daryl, in this text? We can spend probably another oh, 10 minutes on it. Uh, just try and summarize it for us. Yeah, I think two things. Um, there's so much here, Brian, and, and mm. we could do a study just on this on this passage. But right. I think the one theme you've touched on slightly already, and that is the fact that there is no exclusion or discrimination before mm. God. There, there is nothing in you or in me that would place either of us ahead of the other one right. before God. Absolutely. There is nothing, there is nothing about us. There's nothing of our origins or our status or our gender or what we look like or what we're worth. There's nothing that puts you or me ahead of each other before God. Mm. And it, that for me is so powerful because it reminds us that the forgiveness that is in Christ is also the same for everyone. Mm. It doesn't matter that because you're a better guy than I am, that you earn 
more salvation than I do. That's you know, there, there. this is the same Jesus. It's the same promise. And we are reminded here in verse 26, we are all mm. sons of God. Amen. So that for me is the first, the first key thought here is that there's no discrimination between anybody. Doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, or what you've done. And the second, and it links back to a previous study that we've done, and that is that we have our identity That's in right. Christ. Amen. That that you know we we are called as children of the promise. Mm. Um, and we quoted last last week that that passage from Peter about being a a royal nation, a royal priesthood. You know, set yes. set apart. There is an identity and a belonging. And we know that that promise of the ultimate rest started in Genesis 3 and then came through Abraham when Abraham was promised that land and that he would be the father of a nation and he would inherit that land. That is our promise right. um, through Jesus. And been. so it spans beyond history. And that for me was the other theme is mm. the sense of who I am in jesus amen so what i am becomes irrelevant but who i am is now what really matters and in jesus i am an heir of that promise that god gave to abraham originally daryl you put it so well thank you so much so we need to cease from our own works as god did when he kept the sabbath and trust in god's not only as our creator, but as our redeemer in his works, in his finished works at the cross. And so Paul tells us that the foot of the cross is level. God will receive us if we come to him in Christ. And in Christ, Paul says, we are all Abraham's children, not our ethnicity, not our nationality, not our education, not our riches, nothing but a life in Christ, God accepts. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded that the issue is the heart, Daryl. Uh, God yeah. wants us to give our hearts to him. Yeah. And that is surrender. Um, Jeremiah 17 verse 9 and 10 says, The heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. And yet in, mm -hmm. the, in the next test, God says, I know the heart. Um, and Jeremiah's appeal yeah. is, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, O Lord, and I'll be safe for you, are my yeah. praise. So God wants to heal our backsliding hearts. God wants to come into yeah. our hearts and give us true rest. And then we will understand what a life in Christ really means. A life of obedience, a life of trust, a life of faith. Daryl, thank you so much for your insights. To our viewers, God bless you. And may you experience the true rest. May I experience the true rest in Christ as we daily come to him, not just on Sabbath, but each day surrendering our hearts to him. Let us close with a word of prayer. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. We thank you for his perfect example that we can follow through the scriptures and through a life of surrender. We thank you that his desire is that we might experience rest in him and his completed works for our salvation. And that if we are obedient, if we will follow Jesus, the cloud, he will take us to the heavenly Canaan that you have gone to prepare for us. Bless each one of us as your children, that we might be found faithful, that we might not have the same unbelief as the children of Israel. But we are reminded there are those like Joshua and Caleb that trusted you fully. May we be the Joshua's and Caleb's of our day. Through the power of your spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.